Hi everyone, it's Missy. It's two weeks before average date of the frost free date in my region and I decided to give you a quick garden tour. So this is my main vegetable garden. So far it looks pretty bare because we have a lot of stuff to plant. I do have weeds coming. We've had a week of rain which has been great uh, for getting things watered that I have had planted. Uh, when I come into my garden I have my herbs such as my thyme, rosemary, my two kinds of mint and my chives um, over in this section. The chives and the mint are the only perennial herbs really in my area. And so the mint is just in pots to contain it because it would spread all throughout my garden if I didn't. And then to my right, I have my row of strawberries. Now I decided that I am gonna have my strawberries over on the east side of my garden, running north and south, and I'm gonna switch up my garden so I have plots or patches with one main um, pathway running down the middle. So over on this one pathway, I have my beets that have been planted, but it's been on the cooler side, so they haven't germinated. And then over on my left, I have my cabbage and romaine lettuce. And this week, you really have to watch out for pests. So I have my micro mesh netting over the top. And then you have the potato patch, and you just want to keep these hilled. I haven't seen anything pop up yet. But if you do have stuff popped up in your potato patch, you want to rehill them again this week. And then over to my right, this is just a blank area where I'm going to be putting in some Walla Walla onions. They just got delivered today, but as always, we have to watch out for frost and we are actually in a freeze warning. So I have to kind of wait on that. And then I will be slowly filling um, in this section with peppers. And over here, I will also probably have to put some more pepper plants because I have a lot of peppers this year. And then I have my celery, so I have three there. I'll be throwing over some uh, old dish towels, flour sack dish towels, um, so that way the frost cannot penetrate the celery because it's kind of more of a tender crop. And then over here I have all my, my bib lettuce, my head lettuce, um, all those ones that need plenty of space. And actually over here, I'll have my bush beans, sorry. I won't be able to put peppers over here. This will be my bush beans. And then I have my new strawberry patch. So I did these up this week. This is the week to start a strawberry bed if you so choose. I showed a video last year at this time on how I transplanted my strawberries from the runners that I already had from my old patch. So I will insert a clip so you can see how I did that. Okay, so I have my strawberry plant right here. This is the little runner that it's used to connect to the main plant. So what I'm gonna do is cut that. And now that it's cut, I can take my little hand trowel and just go and dig the plant up. You wanna make sure you get the roots and everything. My soil's a little bit on the dry side, so hopefully it comes right up. I'm doing this with one hand too, which doesn't help. There we go. So I got one plant, and then all I'm going to do is bring it down. I've already replanted one. I'm just going to put it right here in a row, and I kind of stagger them a little bit. So I need to go this way to the left. Dig out a little spot for the plant and set it right into place. Again, it's easier using two hands. You don't want to bury the crown, which is this right here. And then you just press it down in. And then all I'm going to do is water it in. Okay, so that is the east side of my vegetable garden. I'm just walking over to the west side and over here where my blueberries are currently sitting is actually where my compost uh, pile is going to be. So I'm going to have that in the central region of the garden. 
And then my western side is broken out into four sections. This section where the fencing is kind of stacked up is going to be where the tomatoes go. So my cherries, my paste, my slicing tomatoes. And then over towards the southern side, it's going to be my melon, squash, and cucumbers that I have growing in the house. And I have some fence panels there for the cucumbers to grow on. And then towards the southwest corner is where the sweet corn is going to be planted in the near future. Um, I'm still waiting for some sweet corn seed to come from Gurney's is where I ordered it from, but everything is like on back order this year. So I, I finally found a store with some sweet corn seeds. So I'll be growing um, Bodacious is the variety that I found to grow, and that's a very common one in my region. And then of course you guys see in a previous video how I grew or planted peas and you can see they are popping up and I'm going to have to figure out how to cover these guys tonight so that way they don't freeze. Um, they're pretty tender when they first pop out of the ground and I don't want to take any chances because this is a pretty large pea crop. I see quite a few have sprouted. Wow. And yeah, lots of weeding to do as well. But I'm really liking my new garden layout. I wish I would have done this originally when I first started this garden because it really makes it um, easier to navigate and I'm not compacting the whole garden, uh, switching things out. And I've also got my areas where I could do my crop rotation. Okay, so I'm over at the garden boxes now, and you can see that the lettuce and spinach are coming right along. And then another thing you could do this week is plant even more lettuce. So that's what I did, and you can see that they've already popped out of the ground. Um, that just shows how warm the soil has become. And then I also planted more spinach. That hasn't popped up yet, but I'm sure it will shortly. I just have this netting over the top so the deer and rabbits don't come and eat this, but I will, I'm supposed to be getting a fleece tunnel. UPS is supposed to be dropping it off this afternoon, so I will put a fleece tunnel over this just to make sure that my plants don't get bitten by frost. Um, it is supposed to get down to, they said around 27, 28 degrees, so that's why I'm a little iffy and just taking extra precautions. And then in this netting, these are the red onion bulbs that I planted and you can see that they are starting to sprout. I just have the nets over the top to keep the birds from plucking them out of the ground. But somehow the birds have been getting in there and still plucking them out of the ground. I don't know how they're doing that. They must be going underneath so I've been putting rocks on the sides. So I'm going to be changing these out to poly though especially since the onions are coming along pretty slow. I want to give them a little bit of boost of warmth and the poly will do that because it will give it that greenhouse effect because there's still a lot that haven't done anything yet. So I'll be switching those out this afternoon, especially with that freeze coming. And as I mentioned earlier, it's all about keeping track of the pests that are in your area. This is a trap that was sent to me by our university extension office. They ask for volunteers each year to trap certain moths. So you could have an army worm moth trap, but I volunteer to trap what's called black cutworm moths. And cutworms are usually a huge issue, especially when you're dealing with corn. <laughs> and I actually have a cornfield right next to me. And I like to trap them not only to help out the farmers to figure out if they should be scouting for cutworm damage and when to be scouting for that damage, but also it lets me know if I have to be worried about cutworms in my area for my sweet corn and my garden. Cutworms should, can cut down all crops. Um, to prevent the cutworm damage, you can take paper and wrap it around the stems of the plant. I use toothpicks um, to put a three or four toothpicks around the plants just to keep the cutworms from um, eating them. But I'm going to tell you, in my area, we've hardly seen any moths. So I trapped from the middle of March to the middle of May, and I've only caught one moth. And that is really, really rare. I usually catch quite a few, um, which is good. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm really happy about that. So I'm actually finishing up on that trap. Uh, I think I have one more week. 
but also just keep an eye like with dandelions and stuff you if you have those growing i'm in the in my um the edge of the property right now by the grove but it's uh an interesting way to see what moths are in the area i don't see any bugs right now because it's so cold um but you can definitely tell a lot what i do is i have an insect book and i just go and look up the moth and then figure out what the larvae is and what they feed on that way i have an idea of what to look out for in my garden and that's about it the only other thing i could think of is if you have asparagus you can start um, harvesting the spears. Of our asparagus is in the ditch, so uh, it just grows wild in my region, so I don't have it in my garden. But if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.